Coming up next on Small Town Big Deal. Yeah. Just nothing like high school football. It's a big deal all across America with ways for lots of students to shine. Where everyone comes together as one. It's the phenomenon called Friday Night Lights. And we find one town cheering on one very special football player. No, I just kept thinking to myself, you know, I could do that. It's game time on Small Town Big Deal. The small town big deal. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. And as we crisscross America every week, no matter what city or state we're in, if it's a Friday night in the autumn, they all have one thing in common, and that's Friday Night Lights. That annual football <laughs> frenzy hits with such gusto. So we wanted to take a closer look to find out why the players, the bands, the cheer squads, the whole community seems to get so fired up. And we mean fired up. But there's much more to the excitement of Friday nights than just what happens on the field during the game. This week, our travels bring us to the heart of the football-loving South, to the town of Trussville, Alabama, a small town just northeast of Birmingham. It is what Trussville revolves around. During the fall, we start talking about it. Wednesday, Thursday, who are playing, what's going on. It's really the only place in our city where the community comes together as, as one. On Friday night, we're all Huskies, we're all together. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, there's just nothing like high school football, and it's, it's just a special experience. The Husky season hasn't gone the way they'd hoped. Key injuries and bad breaks led to some heartbreaking losses. This week's game is the last one of the year. But as they prepare for this game, they try to stay focused because this Friday night, they take on the number one team in the state, the undefeated Thompson Warriors. Every Friday night is our chance to show to everybody out there what we stand for. Both head coaches are focused on prepping their players for the big game. But it's important to point out that both say winning is not their main goal. The best part is just the relationships that you build with kids, just the ability to hopefully impact their future. Athletics is just a small part of a person's life. Losing or not winning a lot of times reveals who you really are. Be somebody that somebody can count on. But make no mistake, the game matters too. And not just to the players. The Thompson cheerleaders are just some of the other students who are all in and perfecting their skills for the big night. I love Friday Night Lights. It's my favorite part about cheerleading. I love cheering on my, some of my best friends and just seeing them work really hard and it paying off. The cheerleaders are also putting on the finishing touches on an important piece of Friday Night Celebration, the banner that players run through when they take to the field. The front of the banner reads like you'd expect, but the back of Thompson's banner, the part only the players see, has a Bible verse encouraging the players to work with all their heart. It feels like college football. It feels like college football in a small town. The Huskies cheer squad is also serious about making the perfect banners for game day. Wow. Check out this planning board. The girls have been working on designs for months. This is the master plan for the entire season. Red dot means drawn, blue dot means painted, and green dot means in the bucket and ready for game day. Wow. And of course, there's plenty of glitter. Wow. Look at this oh. glitter. Ah. My goodness. And we have had to replenish throughout the years. The last step takes the entire cheer squad, getting the sign anchored to the pose for the players to run through on game night. In fact, the whole town gets ready for Friday night football here. Like in many small towns across America, local businesses decorate their storefronts in support of their local team. It's fun, it's a way to give back and show our support. Um, everybody is one, everybody has one common goal and that is to support these kids. 
In a small town like this, the city really shuts down on Friday night. All the businesses, most of them decorate their windows. Everybody has their trustful apparel on. And really, around 4.30, 5 o'clock, everybody starts shutting down and getting ready to go to the stadium. It's something you'll find in countless small towns. A large part of the community identity comes from gathering together for high school football. Every time we don't wear an art success on Friday night, I mean, I, I, I really feel like I let the whole town down, the whole community down. It's just, just how it is. That, that morning on them bad days, you just kind of wake up and you thought, I hope I can go back to sleep and that was a dream. You're a big deal in this town. I mean, that's just, yeah. the, that's just the way it is. And everybody's got an opinion about the head football coach. I mean, based on nothing or based on something, they got an opinion. It's hard to sleep on a Friday night, <laughs> regardless of the outcome, but especially, I mean, it's just sleepless nights because you second guess everything. And that can be hard on a coach's family. Kate Floyd says they've learned to take it in stride. But sometimes, even Coach Floyd's young sons will question him on the plays he's called. They really know the game much more than I do even, and so they'll come home and they, they aren't afraid to ask Dad what happened really? here, so yes. Let's play the best game we've played all year. Man. But Kate says in victory or defeat, she sees her husband's job as an important calling for them both. To some people, they'll say, oh, it's just a game, but to us, it's really not. It's about building these men, you know, for life. Both coaches say they're trying to teach their players skills that will translate well beyond the football field. The alarm's going off. It might be raining and 38 degrees that first day you go to school or, or your new job. Get up, brush your teeth, get a shower. Still to come, game day craziness. And ponytails and place kicking. That was out of here! Meet a special young lady who's kicking her way into the record books of her high school football team. You're watching Small Town Big Deal! Woo! Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. You know America loves its football. It's a big deal in nearly every town, big or small, and even on the high school level. To learn more about the magic of these Friday night lights, we've traveled to the town of Trussville in the football-loving state of Alabama, where like countless towns across the U.S., it gets crazy on game day. For the Huskies, this is the last pep rally of this football season. And in just a few short hours, they have to face the number one team in the state. Have you ever seen a pep rally like this? I want to be a high school student again. Me too. I want to go back to you at Trustville High School. <laughs> yeah. We never had pep rallies like this at Benton High School. Man, I'm pumped up. Coach, let me in. Later in the day, after classes, we witnessed some pretty unusual preparations for tonight's matchup. These seniors use body paint to show their school spirit. And tonight is senior night, so the theme is a little fancier. Painted on tuxedos is in order. Last time I was in the shower, for about an hour and a half. Let's go, These enthusiastic Huskies will sit with hundreds of other students in what they call the dog pound, the student cheering section at the football game. There was one student cheering from this section that saw how much the team struggled when their starting kicker got hurt. They were missing many extra points and field goals. She just knew she could help. That's right, we said she. I mean, I watched the game and I, you know, I just kept thinking to myself, you know, I could do that. Jordan Lynn is committed to play college soccer next year but she'd always dreamed about playing football. Wow. So Jordan found Coach Floyd in the lunchroom at school. So she comes up to me in the lunchroom and says, Coach, I, I know I can kick for it. I know I can make extra points for sure, and I can probably make some field goals. He, what did his face look like? like? He was like, like, really? Like, you, you want to come kick? Coach Floyd invited Jordan to practice to give her a shot. I just thought, hey, I'll, you know, I'll come out and try. Maybe, maybe I'll be good at easy. it. <laughs> There's no maybe about it. Jordan is very good at it. Right down the middle. I was like, oh, I can actually kick it pretty far. <laughs> and she just doesn't miss. Jordan says kicking a football is definitely different than soccer, especially because of the uniform. 
shoulder pads were a little, you know, weird at first, just because it's like you have that extra weight on yeah. you. And yeah. I'm like, oh, this is kind of weird. Pants were fine, but it was the helmet, I think, that was the most adjusting to, because it's hard because you can't really see as well. Cheering for their senior daughter on the football field was not something Jordan's parents ever thought they'd be doing. Well, at first I was kind of shocked. I didn't know, you know, is it is a joke or, uh, but she's actually, she was so serious about it. And I knew just by look that this is something she wanted to do. So we were like, okay, we're behind you. No, she's not one of the guys, she's Jordan. And so she carried her personality into this experience. And so you, what you see on the field is Jordan. That's all smiles all acting, you know, pretty and sassy. She is 100% girl, 100% Jordan when she does this. We found out she's also 100% patient. So I got a question, Jordan. Do you think you could teach Jan to kick a football? I can, yeah, I can try. Do you want to learn? <laughs> well, I can learn. I don't know if I can actually kick it. Well, I think you can. Oh, he just says that to set me up. <laughs> One, two. You want your hips to face where you want to go. Huh. And if I throw my hip out of joint, you know? <laughs> three, like that. Yes. You want to try to hit about the middle of the ball. Okay. And you want to drive up. And then one, two to the side. Two. Yes. Oh, golly. All right, I'll give it my best shot. Keep your eye on the ball. Oh! <laughs> it's probably hard in boots, too. Yeah, it's hard in boots. I really like you as my coach, better than Coach Rodney. Hey! That was straight! That was right down the middle. It was, it went straight. It went straight. Just a little bit more height, a little more power. A little more height, a little more power. Yeah, I've always need more power. It's pretty clear I'm gonna need to practice a lot more. Hey. But no time for that now. It's nearly game time, and Jordan is quietly going through her warm-ups, preparing for tonight's matchup. It's a rainy, chilly night, but that doesn't keep these student athletes from getting fired up to play. And on this celebration of senior night, they get one more chance to take the field as they prepare to face the undefeated Thompson Warriors. We thank you for the night you've given us. We thank you for the opportunity, God. Still to come, it's finally game time. We're ready to see firsthand what the big deal really is about these Friday night lights. Welcome back to Small Town Big Deal. Good luck, man. Good luck. In the fall on any given Friday night, high school football teams take center stage all across America. And here near Birmingham, Alabama, it's game time. The Hewitt Trustville Huskies versus the undefeated Thompson Warriors. Even in the rain, so many people from the community are showing up early and getting excited. What makes Friday nights across America so special? Well, Rodney, I think it's because of just the pageantry that brings everybody together. You have so many people and so many moving parts. I think that's one thing that brings everybody together that unlike most sports really just can't do. This is our favorite time of year. We can't wait to get to the games. We just love Husky football. Everybody up, everybody up. Let's In go. the locker room, Coach Floyd has one more chance to address his players. There's got to be some tension as they are about to face the number one ranked team in the state. Let's play the best game we've played all year, man. The best game we've played the entire season. I want you to know I'm super proud of you guys. Okay, and, and we, we've had to fight through a lot of adversity. A lot, a lot of stuff, unfortunately, that's happened. But I'm super proud of you. Okay, I love every one of you guys in here. Okay? Let's send our seniors out with the win. Hey, listen up. In the Warriors locker room, a similar message from Coach Freeman as they hope to keep their undefeated record intact. When you make a great play, celebrate in the right way. Praise God with it. Hey, let it be our best game of the year. You understand me? Yes, Touch brother, let's pray. Out in the stands, the students in the all-important bands are getting fans fired up for the big match. I feel like we really set the dynamic for the game as far as like the crowd noise. If we're loud, the crowd is loud. There's nothing like football in Alabama. There's nothing like the electricity of a Friday night um, under the lights. It's just, you look, you look forward to it. The band's amazing, our dog pound's amazing, cheerleaders, it's just the excitement on a Friday night under those lights is amazing. It's like the one night a week people come together 
and the school is just one, you know, it's just pretty cool. I'm not from either one of these towns. I am not from the state of Alabama, and I'm excited. I really have a better appreciation for how many students, I mean, parents, community leaders, it takes to pull off an event like this because these people aren't getting paid. They do this because they love it. So, chili. Yeah, oh, press that and fill it up. Yeah, just like that. We have three concession stands in the stadium, and we usually need about 20 volunteers per stand. So, that's about 60 volunteers every home game. Okay, we got another one. They raise money for all the band uniforms the flag sets, the big brass instruments, buses to away games. It's a labor of love. The game is underway and things start to heat up. That's a hole! Gotta get at the hole, man! You can't miss that! What do you got there, man? Oh! Let's do the first three play, man! Did they, did they get a number? I didn't I didn't hear. It was you? I think they said What'd you do? It's been a great game, and by the end of the third quarter, it's a one-point game, 21-20, and the Huskies are leading the number one yes, team in the state. All right, there we go, deep. Jordan Lynn had the opportunity to attempt five extra point kicks, and every single one was right down the middle. Jordan's dad gives his customary thumbs-up approval to his daughter. <laughs> We're coming down to the wire, and it's just a one-score game. Coach Floyd's wife, Kate, is watching anxiously as the final minutes wind down. We told ourselves coming in that the story wasn't all about what happened on the field, but about everything surrounding it. But the drama on the field pulled us in. And in the end, Hewitt Trustville beat the number one ranked Thompson Warriors 35-29. An incredible win over a great opponent. And even before the handshakes are over, the emotions start to set in for the seniors. Proud of you, man. I miss you, man. I'm gonna miss you. Oh, you're awesome, man. I'm gonna miss you, man. I love you, man. Thanks for all you did, man. Too, folks. You just beat the number one ranked team in the state. Upset them. What's going through your mind? I mean, I'm just super proud of all our kids. I'm so proud of our seniors. Um, we've had so much adversity this year, and, and uh, you know, it could have ended one way or the other, but, but our guys came through. It's a fun night. It's a fun night for our entire town. You know, I'm excited we were able to end this thing right, you know, for, for our entire community. So. I, I've never been more proud of a group ever. Okay, let's handle those seniors, man. I'm proud of you guys. Okay, I can't, I can't thank you enough for how much you, you've, uh, you've put into this program, man. Thank you guys and love you, man. And a huge small town big deal congratulations to Coach Freeman and the Thompson Warriors who went on to win the Alabama Class 7A State Championship. We'll be right back. We hope you've enjoyed this episode of Small Town Big Deal, and I hope it got your blood pumping and maybe rekindled some of your old time school spirit. <laughs> right. And yeah, I gotta tell you, I think I now finally understand a little bit more because, you know, no matter what student you are, an athlete, a band member, a cheerleader, you know, somebody that's like a super student fan, there's a little bit of tonight for everybody and for all the townspeople. Yeah, and that's why these stadiums get filled every Friday night all across America. I'm Rodney Miller. And I'm Jan Carl. Join us again next week when once again we celebrate the great stories from across America. Ooh, ooh, ooh. I've never kicked, ever kicked a football. Never? So, never, never, never. Not even ever. kicked one out of the way or anything? No. <laughs> Woo, 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 you ever we'll held a football? There. I have held a football. <laughs> so I'll go ahead and set it up for you. Do you do you usually would you kick right footed or would you kick left footed? <laughs> no, you a left footed kicker or right? -handed I, I think I would kick right footed. Right footed, you I think. think. Okay.